It's bright, but it's also a little dark. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the overhead light on. go ahead and start standing today and you can take a moment if you don't have a yoga block any yoga block type thing will do most of the time we don't need it for anything that is so specific that only a yoga block will do Okay, and I will, if this is your first time, I will be facing every which way. A lot of times I will just turn so that you can see something that I'm doing, which doesn't mean you have to turn. Everybody has like a different level of comfortability following along with the verbal instructions versus um, needing the visuals to kind of get where they're going. So try to blend it as best as possible. All right, so we'll start standing, facing one direction on your mat. Take a moment to get your feet set underneath you and then rock your weight forward in your feet and back in your feet and try to notice where you normally put your weight because where you put your weight in your feet will affect how you are tilting your pelvis and you want to have as neutral of a stance in your feet as possible with all 10 toes splaying out, an engaged arch and a lift out of your feet so that your pelvic floor can be lifted and your pelvis can be neutral. Drop your arms by your sides. Slide your shoulders away from your ears. And then just reach up through the top of your head as you press down through your feet. Slow your breathing down. This is a great time to take an assessment of how you feel so that at the end you can notice any changes that have happened. We'll take a cleansing breath together. Breathe in through your nose. Hold it in at the top. Open your mouth. Drop into the class. On your next breath in, reach both of your arms overhead. Try to reach tall from the base of your ribs all the way up through your fingertips. Any hand position, I've got my fingers interlaced. My shoulders are kind of tight. If that's you, you might want to interlace. Drop your chin up and back as much as feels good, but notice if you get so tight through the skin in your neck and throat that it's hard to breathe, then back off of it if that's the case. Reach up a little higher on your inhale. On your exhale, pull your hands, thumbs to your heart, lift your heart up and keep a little pressure into the tips of your thumbs. As you hinge your butt back, lean your chest forward. And we, when you reach the limit of your hamstring flexibility, go ahead and bend your knees, bring your hands to the ground or to your block. And let's, let's keep it at that half lift for now. I'm gonna go ahead and use my block. I'm muscularly sore right now, so this will be nice. Keep your belly on your thighs in this half lifted position and cultivate a sensation of using the muscles in your hip crease to be here and your glutes. Notice if your weight is rocked backward, you wanna bring it into your forefoot forward like you're reaching the top of your head forward and your weight shifts a little bit with it. One more big breath in here. On your exhale, 
you'll let your spine go from that nice neutral shape to a C curve. Tuck your chin a little more than you think to let your head actually be released. And relax your shoulders away from your ears instead of letting your shoulders go down with gravity. That is a temptation and maybe that can feel good for some muscles, but if you're looking for a greater release in your neck, release your shoulder muscles away from your ears and you'll have a little more space in your vertebrae to work with. Come back up to that halfway lifted position. Exhale, round back down. Half lift, inhale. Round down, exhale. Roll all the way up to stand. Lift your arms up when you get to the top. And then exhale your arms by your sides. I'm going to spin to face the camera. If you want to, you can. You don't have to. I'm going into a tree pose here as some more prep, some gentle prep for flowing. So tree can start very grounded with the ball of your foot on the ground and your heel against the inside of your calf muscle. You want your pelvis still front to back neutral and side to side neutral. Only the thigh bone orientation is changing, not the orientation of your pelvis. So you're rolling up open here as best as possible. Maybe that's as far as you go with it. Maybe you creep your foot up so that the entirety of your foot is on your inner calf and possibly you can go higher than that into the inner thigh. Opposite leg. I don't care what leg you're doing because I didn't cue it, right? So whichever leg you want to start with is fine. Fabric can work for or against you here. Wherever you're at with whatever leg you started on, shake it out and let's go. Whatever leg was just up, swing it behind you, toes on the ground behind you, hands to your hips on your inhale, push your hips back on your exhale and fold down. Notice this leg that's behind me, it's kind of curtsied out to the side. Get your block if you need it and slowly fold down. I'm gonna go ahead and my socks gotta go. So don't mind me. Good, bring your hands to the block or just come on up for more of a neutral spine. Inhale, move your hands to your hips and stand it the rest of the way up. Shift the leg from behind you back underneath your hip and you're setting up for a tree now on this other side. So start with the ball of your foot on the ground and your heel to your inner ankle, lower calf. Then maybe you creep up to the inner calf all the way, no ground. Maybe you come up higher into the inner thigh. This is where pants will definitely work against me here. So I'm just gonna drop it into a lotus for now. On your next exhale, release your foot and take it behind you a little bit with your toes tucked, hands to your hips, hinge from your hips, bend both of your knees and pull high, fold yourself down. This is a rounded spine position here. I'll turn back to the front, so in case you need to see what I mean by that, you can see. Breathe into your back body. All right, halfway lift on your inhale. Make a little space. Exhale, step your left foot next to, or step your feet side by side. 
Send your butt back, lengthen the top of your head forward on your inhale. Exhale, bend your knees as much as you need to, round your spine. Roll up to stand, breathe in. Lift both arms up. Exhale your hands to your heart. Roll your shoulders open. Pull your chest forward. Inhale, lift both arms up and look up. Exhale, hinge from your hips. Bend your knees deeply, forward fold. Half lift, inhale. Plant your hands, step back, plank. So you can plank from plank, both knees off of the ground, tailbone tucked underneath you, chest lifted, upper back rounded, spine in an integrated arch, or if you need to drop your knees, drop them behind your hips and keep that spinal position, or you can be in a tabletop if you need to be. Good, drop your left knee down to the ground and kickstand that foot from pointing backward to pointing directly behind you. Your right leg is gonna stay long, toes pointing to the right. Roll and stack your right side over your left side. You want your hand, your left hand underneath your left shoulder, but how sort of leaned or not leaned into that you are is gonna be up to you. But you're stacking right ribs over left, shoulders over shoulders, hips over hips, and your hips move forward so that there's a longer line at the front of your right hip. Your gaze can be anywhere that's comfortable. Plant your right hand back down, drop your right knee down to the ground, kick your left leg up toward the ceiling, and then lift the back of your head up like your foot and your head are gonna touch. Feel your back engagement, but seek also to find your hamstring engagement, which you may possibly do by bending your knee more a couple of times while you try to keep that lift. Good, you can stay, or if you want to reach your right hand back, catch a hold of your foot and roll your right shoulder open. It doesn't matter how dropped that knee gets, you can do that with the knee dropped so that it's more stable, or you can lift your leg up while you're doing it. Up to you. Slowly release if you want for the foot. Plant both hands back down, both knees back down. Uh, if you, whatever version of plank you did before, go back unless you want to amplify and move forward in the pro progression. Now drop your right knee down and pivot your right foot behind you. Swivel your left heel down and stack your left side over your right side. Push your hips forward toward the long left edge of your mat. Figure out how much weight you want shifted forward and backward in that left hand. And find a comfortable gaze for the next couple breaths. Good, rotate back, lift your right leg up, bend your knee and kick it up like a donkey kick, and then lift your head up and back like you're gonna try to close that circuit. 
Squeeze your heel to your butt more. And you can stay or reach back with your left hand for your right foot. Kick into it or do it from the ground and just hit the shoulder. Good, slowly release. Sit your hips back to child's pose. You can have your knees together or knees wide, up to you. You can have your arms forward or arms by your side. That's a personal choice. Make your way up to downward facing dog. Your down dog can be a little shorter or a little wider or a little of both of those things. Whatever you need in order to make that V shape, get your shoulders and your arms in a line and feel the muscles in your hip crease working and the muscles in the backs of your legs stretching. Look forward on your inhale. Exhale, step yourself up between your hands. Forward fold over your legs. We'll move a little faster through some basic sun A's. Inhale, lift your arms up, reach up and look up. And you'll take it right back into your forward fold on your exhale. If you need to bend your knees, do it. Half lift to look forward and lengthen your spine. Plant your hands to the ground, step back to plank pose. Inhale in your plank pose, really get that nice up to tailbone, rounded upper back position. Then rock forward, look forward, bend your elbows back and untuck your toes down to the ground. My elbows are pointing straight up, as you can see, and they're hugged in tight to my body. Scoop your tailbone underneath you, engage your upper back, cobra pose on your inhale, and then hold it and find a pattern to your breath for the next couple of rounds. Press back child's pose. Take a breath in in your child's pose. Let it go slowly. And make your way back to downward facing dog. Gaze forward on your breath in. Exhale, step yourself between your hands, forward fold. Inhale up to stand. Arms up, look up, exhale, fold. Half lift, inhale. Plant your hands, step to plank. Breathe in, plank. Breathe out to lower. Move your palms, one palm print back. Shoulders on your back, tops of feet down. Arms straight and your legs will go straight and lift your knees up for upward facing dog. So my knees are not down. They are floating, and I'm not on my toes. I'm on my the tops of my feet. There's uh, reasons for that related to your pelvic tilt, so don't crunch your low back. Downward facing, lift up and back. Take a big breath in. 
exhale, look forward, fill up, exhale, step to the top of your mat, fold over your legs, inhale up to stand, exhale, dive it down, half lift, inhale, plant your hands, step to plank, plank on your breath in, lower down on your exhale, Cobra or up dog, either one of the back bends, up to you. Breathe in. Down dog, breathe out. Gaze forward on your inhale. Step forward on your exhale. Fold over your legs. Rise to stand, fill up, reach up. Dive forward, breathe out. Inhale, half lift. Plant your hands, step to plank. Plank, inhale, lower exhale. Cobra or upward facing, breathe in. Downward facing, breathe out. Plant your left foot at a little bit of a diagonal. So not in it, you're not turning your left toes per, uh, parallel to the back of your mat. You're pointing them a little bit off to the long edge of the mat. Look forward and step your right foot in between your hands. Rise to stand, warrior one. It's a fairly, it's a comparatively short stance to maybe like your longest lunge or warrior two. Lift your arms up. You're not in a back bend. You're as long and neutral through your spine as possible, but that's going to look different on everybody depending on how open their shoulders are. Take a big breath in. On your exhale, take your hands behind you, roll your shoulders open, and press your palms back. Then press into your left heel and lean the crown of your head forward. Inhale up. Exhale, lean. Up on your inhale. Lean on your exhale. Up on your breath in. Open to warrior two on your breath out. So now your left toes are parallel to the back of your mat. Your stance is wider and your front heel is in the middle of your back arch, like a T. Sit into your legs, into the heel of your front leg specifically so that you're feeling the bottom of your leg turn on, and then your arms are gonna go out to either side. Drop your left arm down, reach your right arm up, and then drop your left ear down to your left shoulder and keep getting up long through your right arm while you sit into that right leg. Good. Cartwheel your hands down to the ground. Frame your right foot and drop your left knee down to the ground. Sink your hips forward and let your head hang down over your right leg. Plant your left hand underneath your left shoulder, turn your right toes and knee to point to the right, and you're going to go from being straight down on your left knee to rotating more to the outside of that leg. So I'm on the pinky toe side of this whole back leg, not knee straight down. Okay, so how much you sag into that is going to depend on your flexibility. If you're more flexible, also get more active in that bottom leg to get more of an integrated stretch on the bottom side of the shape. You can twist into it as much as feels good. Rotate back, 
Shift your hips backwards, slide your right leg a little forward and bow over your straighter right leg. Don't force it to be any sort of straightness. It's arbitrary where you begin to feel the hamstring stretch, or it's idiosyncratic, I mean, where you begin to feel the hamstring stretch. So just, you're not gonna line up with any other person because you're your very own 5D puzzle. Okay, rock it back forward, plant your hands to the ground, step back to plank pose, inhale plank, exhale to lower, cobra or upward facing. Back to downward facing. This time you're going to turn your right toes a little bit out to the right. Look forward on your inhale. Step your left foot forward and rise up to warrior one. You're squaring-ish your hips. So you're going to wrap your right leg forward. That's internal rotation. All the way down that back leg. Lift your arms up on your breath in. And this time, let's go ahead with the palms up, hinge forward, press into that back heel, lean forward. Inhale up. Exhale forward, dandy. Psst. Don't. Inhale up. Forward on your exhale. Inhale all the way up and open to warrior two. Your back toes are now parallel to the back edge of your mat. You're sitting deep enough into that front leg to be a challenge to your hamstring. And you're making sure that you're loading your hamstring by putting the weight in your heel. Drop your right arm down, lift your left arm straight up, and then just drop your right ear down to your right shoulder. Keep reaching up with your left arm. Inhale up and exhale, cartwheel your hands to the ground to frame your left leg, rotate your right knee down, untuck your right toes and let your head hang around your left leg. Plant down through your right hand. Rotate your left toes open to the left. Roll to the outside of your right leg. And side your hip down as you look to the left as much or as little as feels good. Release to face forward, shift your hips backward and work your left leg longer with your body bowed down over your left leg.
Good, bring your body forward, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee up, walk your hands over to the right edge of your mat, turn your toes in, turn your heels out. So yep, that's fully pigeon toed. And you want to feel that all the way upward into the thigh because you're internally rotating your thighs here. Uh, if you just do that and you don't pay attention to the isometric engagement of your feet, you may end up sliding out anyways. So find some sort of isometric engagement. You can hug in or you can push out. It doesn't super matter as long as you find a way to connect your feet into your uh, inner thighs to keep you stable. Lengthen your spine on your inhale, cow your pelvis, so go into a little bit of a back bend for a second on your inhale. And then you can choose to stay here and just cycle through your breath or you can fold deeper down. Hey Dandy, can you maybe not be a jerk, please? No, okay. You want your weight forward in this shape. So if you find a lot of pressure in your heels, move it back into the ball of your foot. Okay, hands out in front of you. Half lift if you weren't already there. Exhale your heels out, your heels in and your toes out. Bring your elbows to the inside of your knees and not on the knee joint but on the inner thigh push your knees more open and drop your body down in line with your hips then shift your hips a little right and a little left slowly stand up reach both of your arms up exhale your hands to your hips Let's pivot over your right leg first. So spin once, spin twice. Pyramid shape, you might want your block, okay? I'll fake it like I have my block. Wrap that back hip forward, shorten your stance as much as you need to. The toes are a little turned out. Same as warrior one, it's never gonna point all the way forward, that's not what we're doing. You wanna keep that heel down, okay? But you're just gonna corkscrew your hips to stay pointing forward despite what your toes are doing. Hinge forward, bring your hands both just below your knee or to your block. Cow spine, right? So not cow spine, cow spine. You want to tilt the front of your hips forward a little bit and your tailbone up in the back so that you feel more of a stretch in that front leg. Maybe you're staying there or maybe you can use that to hinge yourself deeper, more belly to thigh action over that front leg. Maybe you can get your forehead on your knee even. Use your hands to make your way back up slowly. Pivot to the middle, pivot once, pivot twice, face the other leg. All right, so now your right hip is internally spiraling, even though your toes are gonna to remain pointing a little off the edge of the mat. Your hips are gonna corkscrew from the right to the left, all right? Hinge from your hip, find a good stopping point that could even be up here at your quad so that you have the, all right, the ability to go from cat spine to cow spine and find that connectivity between your glutes and your hamstrings. And maybe you're staying Maybe you're hinging deeper.
We'll look forward on your inhale, step your feet together at the top of your mat, lengthen your spine, breathe in, bend your knees, forward fold, breathe out. Roll up, inhale, dive forward, exhale, half lift, breathe in, plant your hands, step back, plank, plank, inhale, lower, exhale, cobra or upward facing, breathe in, exhale, downward facing, let's go. Please. Step your right foot forward, low lunge. Work that back knee behind your hip a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a little. Or 90-90, it doesn't super duper matter. You've got your block as an option to get more upright, or you have your own knee as an option to get more upright. When you do that, Notice that you're kind of already in a back bend. So you're going to tuck your tailbone, squeeze your butt, really, more so. Think about squeezing your butt so that your glutes are holding what's going on in this lower part of the shape. And you can focus on more of a back bend, but from the rib cage up. On your exhale, you'll hinge from your hips, lean your belly onto your leg, pause, align your chin and neck with the rest of your spine, inhale, exhale, rotate your rib cage from the left to the right and slide your left elbow to the outside of your right leg. Maybe that is enough of a twist. If that's the case, you're going to stay there and refine that a little bit and just use your right hand look make shapes right open it prayer it up to you good release take a quarter turn to the left bend your left knee Bring your left toes toward the middle of the shape and then slide your right leg out long. Your hips can be behind your left knee or your hips can be more forward in line with your left knee to modify how intense the inner thigh stretch is. Bring your hands back in, slide your left knee in, send your right knee so that you're kneeling on both of your knees, and then turn to your left and step your left foot forward so you're in a low lunge facing the back of the mat. You're going to use your hands or use the block to bring your upper body more upright. Then you're going to squeeze your butt so that you're not overdoing it with your low back, but take the back bend deeper to open up your chest and your ribs and your throat. Good. On your exhale, Hinge from your left hip to lean yourself forward and straighten out your spine. Breathe in, brace. Exhale, twist your right ribs more to the left and take your right elbow to the outside of your left knee. And then just hang out, adjust. Find what's gonna work.
Breathe out slowly to release. Both hands to the ground piecemeal. Rotate your right toes into the middle. Quarter turn to the right. Slide your left leg long this time. And you could be sitting back more toward your heel, or you can be more hips forward on this. Up to you. Good, come on up. Let's go forward to the front of your mat. This time, both toes together in the middle of your mat, bump your knees wider. And then you can start to lean back. Bring your hands behind you, roll your chest open, maybe even grab your mat. You can use your mat kind of like a yoga strap. And roll. Use it to help you roll your chest more open. If you have open shoulders, that won't be a problem for you. For those of us with tighter shoulders, having that little support is nice. Keep lifting your chest up. You can also lift your hips up. You can drop your head back or keep your chin tucked up to you. Good, sit it down. Let's go ahead and sit out to the side. I'm sitting on my left, I was switching. All right, so I'm gonna face y'all. One leg is in front, one leg is in back. It's pigeon, but it's broken not all fancy where all the lines are connected you're broken down this hip is down all of the way it's very casual and you could just sit up here at the top and play around with how your body is relating to your legs here at the top so that you understand that for yourself if it's not a familiar shape for you or it's a hinge inside of this knee right you can see my knee if my knee was in my chest you would not be able to see my knee which for some people this is going to feel accessible and this will not feel accessible if they're really tight in the back of the hip and low back so if you need to be more over the top of your knee that is fine unless you feel your knee in which case you need to make an adjustment so that you don't feel your knee, but keep this hip grounded. As you get very flat in your upper body over this front leg, you can start to sneak that back leg back. It's gonna go back and it's gonna spiral down to the ground. And you might need to move your body more toward the middle of your mat again in order to really get long front to back between your head and your back leg. Take your hands around your front leg and if you went backward with that back leg, bend it and bring it back up. Okay, you're gonna roll forward on your front knee and right hand, right hand, right knee, or same side hand and knee if you're got a little discombobulated. You're gonna get long 
through that back knee, reach back. This is another opportunity to get hand and foot here, right? You can come up higher with it. You can sink that back hip down into it to get more quad stretch. You can lean more to the side if you're tight. The more you pull your heel in, the more quad stretch you're going to get, but you have to have a certain amount of shoulder flexibility to really get it in there very tight. Okay, and now we'll do this all on the other side. So flippy floppity over to your left hip. Adjust that back leg. Maybe you're staying up here at the top, just assessing. Maybe you're leaning forward. Maybe you're not to the inside of your leg. Maybe you are to the inside of your leg. Good, break it back down, bend that back knee back up, come up, you're gonna lean more actively on your left knee and your left hand. Make whatever adjustments you need to in that back foot, catch a hold of it. Again, if you need to be more even down on the butt, you're just pulling your heel to the butt, that works. Or more upright because that's what you need. I don't feel a stretch in my quad when I'm down, but there are people who do, and that's at all different levels. I stretch my quads very regularly, and even still they end up tight, but today they're kind of medium. My shoulders are also kind of tight, but not their tightest, kind of medium. Okay. Break it back down, and this time, kick your legs out in front of you. May I have these back? Thanks. You're going to want your block or similar item handy. I'm going to take my block behind my head on a low setting. I don't need that much support, but you might even need it depending on how tight things are one level higher. So bring your legs up and you'll swing your leg over like you're sitting in a chair. And I'm already really tight in my uh hip stabilizing muscles so that already felt like a stretch just doing that um maybe that's you maybe you stay maybe the next step is to bring both of your legs in we're not going figure four thigh to thigh and then both thighs in as tight as possible next move is you i've got right leg over left so maybe you're on that side too, hopefully. Um, next, I'm going to grab my right ankle with my left hand because it's opposite to opposite. I'm going to pull that heel in tighter as I'm keeping both of my thighs in tight. 
to get more of a stretch in this top hip. Maybe you can grab your left ankle in your right hand and pull both of your heels to your butt as you're keeping both thighs into your chest. Feel free to abort ship or aban abandon ship or abort mission at any given point along that road. Just backtrack. Let go of your left leg and let your left leg go long on your mat. Hook the your right thigh in the crook of your arm. Use your left arm to pull your inner thigh into your chest. And then draw your leg across from the right to the left. Um, you want this leg to touch the ground. So if your knee is not going to touch the ground, bent, straighten your leg and get your leg on the ground. If your leg's not going to go on the ground, use your block to prop up your leg or use a wall to prop up your leg. Then notice that throwing your hip over means your whole pelvis is going from the right to the left. It's actually not correct. You want your pelvis to still be in a good alignment, so you actually have to sit your hip backward to the right a little bit to pull your thigh bone back into the right position so it is not pulling your pelvis out of position. Then you can do whatever you want to do with this right arm. It can be on your hip as a sort of reminder to keep putting that hip back into the right spot. I'm going to go with a block. That feels like the right move today. You can have your right arm out to the right. You might want to shimmy your shoulders a little bit to the left to help get your spine back in line. This way, even though your pelvis is uh, twisting this away. License to twist does not mean license to bend your spine. License to bend your spine does not mean license to twist your spine. A license to uh, laterally bend your spine, right? They're all, there's th different, three different ways and you can combine them, uh, but you have to do it on purpose in the right circumstances. And what happens for a lot of people is they twist and they kind of collapse in on themselves and that's not a good combo. You want to stay long through your ribs while you're rotating your spine. Okie dokie, use your left hand to guide your right leg back up, take the block back underneath your hips, cross your left leg on top of your right leg this time, pull both of your knees into your chest. Maybe you're grabbing for your feet instead, but keep your thighs into your chest. One or both feet, heels to hips, thighs to chest. Release your right leg, extend it long. Use the crook of your left elbow to pull the inner thigh of your left leg into your chest. Then guide your leg across with your right arm. Block goes out of the way. Figure out if you're gonna use it for your leg anywhere. I'm gonna use it under my knee. I'm gonna shimmy my shoulders a little bit to the right. Stay long through the ribs on both sides. 
your right arm can be a part of helping to remind you to lengthen, to keep that thigh bone going into the hip capsule, or you can sort of take up more surface area by extending your arm out to the left. Gaze can be anywhere. Use your left hand, sorry, and your, well, combo of the hands really to bring yourself back, hug yourself into a little ball. Breathe a couple of breaths against that tension. And then lay yourself out, take up space for Shavasana. Bring a little movement back into your body. You can make your way up to a comfortable seat. And as you get upright, you can notice how you feel now compared to how you felt when you checked in at the beginning of class. And just like at the beginning of class, we'll take a cleansing breath. So let your old air out all of the way. Then breathe in with the purpose of holding it in at the top. Open your mouth. 
let it go. Thank you, thank you. Alrighty, I will see y'all in the den. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.